Shabbat Shalom, we're back, and greetings to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. I'm alive. There's no rigor mortis here. Some of you were wondering what happened to him. Is he okay? Thank you so much for your prayers, and many of you reached out through Shabbat Fellowship and the connection to see what on earth is going on at Torah to the tribes. Sometimes one needs a break. Sometimes one needs to plug into Yahweh in a deep way to reconnect. Don't we all? Don't we all need to do that? To reconnect with his Kadosh holy word in spirit and power in reflection. You know what my Bible smells like, I always tell you. Tobacco, Marmite, butter, you know, just the most amazing things for an Englishman. If you're in the Word, I pray that yours smells as good as mine does. Let's get into the Word today, a word of edification, and we're going to give you some updates, and then next week, Yahuwah willing, get back into Marseh Shlechim, the Acts of the Apostles. So keep your guard up. We've got to keep our guard up today especially. But what does that really mean? God, the Hebrew word for God, is Shema. It's spelt with a shin mem chresh. 468 times it appears in the Old Testament. Shema. It means to God, as in Adam and Eve, Adam and Hava, were given a charge, were they not? They were given a charge to guard the garden. And because they neglected that charge, we are all now in the predicament that we are in today with these tyranny and encroaching at our door, possibly knocking at some of your doors if you live in the inner city. Soon, we need to be guarded. We live in a fallen, fallen, sinful world because Adam and Eve let down the guard, and S.A. Tan came into the garden, and we know the rest of history. Shema, to guard, to keep, to observe, to preserve. But what is it that we should be keeping? What is it sh we should be observing? What is it that we should be preserving? Oh, our very life, our flesh, oh, are we to be guard? You see, the world right now is trying to set a guard, but it's in a different direction. We need to be guarding, observing, and of course, watching and preserving Yahuwah's word, worship, and the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. We're instructed to Shema, to guard Yahuwah's word in season, and out of season. And sometimes you have to step away to be able to step deeper in to come back stronger. And that's what I pray we are doing here at Torah to the Tribes, coming back stronger for this next season for all of us. We need to guard his commandments. We need to guard his commandments. And we need to understand Yahushua's words regarding the Shema and commandment keeping. Because when I started to realize the power of going back to what was before, keeping the commandments, the Torah, Yahweh's teaching and instruction, my life changed, our life changed, our families changed, the type of people we associated with changed. We surrounded ourselves with others that were like-minded. Yahweh's Torah, his teaching and instruction, brethren. It is the principles of Yahuwah that are the principles for life. But there's a bunch of principalities operating right now in dominions to try and take people away from this simple, holistic lifestyle that Yahuwah has for us. It's not that complicated, but we are to live, breathe, and dwell His Word in us to become the manifestation of it to a sick and dying word. World, excuse me, world, excuse me. The, the Greek word that is often used for what some would say law or Torah is the Greek word nomos. But it doesn't really specifically identify Torah. 
It's a Greek word. Nomos. It means any law. It can be any law. And Paul categorizes 17 different types of law. We are living, brethren, in a time of nomos. Any law goes. The law for this mandate stands today, but it could flip-flop tomorrow. But then there's going to be another law that flip-flops to the other side the next day. And then they're going to... We are living in a time of nomos. Law where there really is no law. Flip-flop to the left, to the right. We are living in a time where law, mandate, rule, regulation is played over here, over there, over here, over there. It's the land of nomos. So what better time to get back into what is tangible and real, his living, living Torah. And how do we do that? We have to press into his word. We have to press into worship. And we have to press into the Ruach, the Spirit. Because we're only going to receive as much truth as we're willing to obey. And that is why people out there are so deceived. Because they do not have a heart to obey the truth. And the truth is the manifestation of a person called Yahushua HaMashiach. The commandments of Yahuwah, they really are like yield and stop signs in our lives. They're here to guide us, to support us, to protect us, to preserve us in tough times in which we do live. You see, some would look at me and go, oh, well, he keeps the commandments. Really, I don't. The commandments really keep me, if you think about it. Yes, I have a heart to keep the commandments, but the heart to keep the commandments, it's in fact the commandments of Yahuwah that are keeping me on the trajectory for heaven on the trajectory for eternity. The commandments are really there to keep us. So many times people say, oh, I keep the commandments, as if we're some kind of self-righteous group. No, the commandments ultimately, they keep me. They keep my marriage. They keep my family. They keep my community. They keep us because it's Shema. It's to God. I find a truth. I am in fact not keeping Torah, but Torah is in fact keeping me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Matthew chapter 5, 15, verse 7, it is written, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people, they draw nigh unto me with their big flapping mouth, and they honor me with their big flapping lips, But their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me because they're so interested in the world, in the teachings and the doctrines of men. It has a form of godliness, but it denies the power of the living word. That's what I love about the Torah to the tribes community. We are people that search the scriptures daily to see what Yahuwah's word saith. And we need to do that and take time to do that, especially in the season of where there is so much word out there, but it's a false word. There are so many voices out there, and they are false voices, and there are so many spirits out there, and they are demonic, wicked spirits that are leading to lawlessness and deception. Be careful! Be careful when you hear a knock at the door, especially those of you that live in a city, because your conversations, they schedule your next seasons. And whatever you put out there, it comes back towards you. It's called the law of the harvest. And something you consent to, it could actually be an invisible contract. Watch out for the invisible contracts. That is what is in play today. Invisible contracts. Be very careful in this next season because that's how the majority will fall. What they've actually consented to was an invisible contract. 
So be very careful of what you say, what you do, and what you open up. Because ultimately, we will all have to take an account for every word that comes out of our mouth. And one of the most powerful, most powerful things that you control is your autograph, your signature. Do not give it away. Do not give it away. Be very careful. Be very careful. So, we need to walk in power. We need to walk in faith. But faith, not attached to instruction, it's no faith at all. And there's the problem with religion. That's why we've seen so many of our friends, so many of our family that are in the traditional church, their faith in a time of difficulty is waning because it is not attached to instruction, the law of faith. Faith has to be attached to the word of Yahuwah for it to be effective faith that is fortifying and able to shema and be a fortress. It has to be attached to something. It cannot just be an idea. And that is why Torah, the living Torah, is so important because our faith can attach to something tangible. But we also have to be careful, and I'm preaching to myself as well, be careful not to succumb to fear. If we let fear prevail, we'll lose access to Yahweh's powerful Ruach Kakodesh. And that fear will then schedule our next season, which will be isolation. And another word for isolation is lockdown. And is the world pumping up the fear right now? Because they are trying to schedule the next season of isolation. You see, this is what it does. Fear, 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 fear. Cast out fear. Otherwise, we're going to be susceptible to isolation. That's the whole plan. That's why you're seeing all this delta, all these variants, all this coming on all the time. It's to bring the whole masses into this fear, fear, fear. Because fear, it disconnects you from the presence of Yahuwah and it schedules your next season, which is isolation, and another word for isolation is lockdown. So all of these things to say, be watchful and guard. Shema, Shema, Shema. Why all these changes now? Why all these changes in the world? And why are they happening so fast? It's coming so quickly. Every nation, every tongue, every tribe. Why is it coming so quickly? Why so fast? Because we're living in the days of Elijah, brethren. We are living in the days of Elijah. Just before the first coming, things were changing fast. The Romans were in, in Judea. The temple was in a turmoil. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had just gone through absolute hell with Antiochus a few hundred years before. Things were changing fast. And then along came John the Baptist. And he came in the spirit of Elijah. But now the spirit of Elijah is coming upon us. Why? To turn our hearts back to the ways of the Father. It's written in Malachi 4 verse 4, and you know it all very well. Remember ye the Torah of Moshe my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and with the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yahuwah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. That's the days that we are living. But we have to be aware of the spirit of anomia, the Greek word there, without Torah, the spirit of of lawlessness, the spirit of anti-Messiah, the spirit of the world. It's fear-based. It leads to isolation, which is lockdown. And who's promoting this work of iniquity? 
the kings of the world, the kings of this earth. It's not that we should be ignorant of the days in which we live. It's that we should be most, most awake and not in slumber because the time is nigh that the spirit of Elijah is coming upon his people if we have the heart to press in and shema to guard his word. It's time we all not just experienced Yahusha, but we must truly take that time to abide in him. In 1 John 3, verse 24, it is written, And he that keepeth his commandments abideth in him. That's like grafting in, grafting in. That is an agricultural term of sustenance, nutrition, fruit and blossom, a harvest. That's to abide. Today, people can't even abide with their mother and father. They can't even abide with their spouse. They can't even abide. There is no, we live in a world of no abide. And therefore, we see the depravity and the fear and the isolation. We have to come back to the simple truths of Scripture, to the simple truths of marriage, children, family, agriculture, harvest, multiplicity, and blessing. We've got to get connected to Yahuwah's land, to his ground, because he walks in the midst of the garden, and we will smell and feel his very presence. Yahushua in Matthew 5 is teaching, of course, kingdom principles. And the person, the person of Yahushua prepares you for eternity. But the principles of Yahushua revealed in his manifest word, they prepare you for what's coming upon this world today. So we better be prepared. Proverbs says in the fourth chapter in the seventh, word, the seventh verse, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal commandment thing, isn't it? His word, then, is the principal thing. Fear. Fear is the absence of instruction. But we are to put on the whole armor of Elohim, and Torah is the armor of a king. And we are to live and walk as kings and priests upon this earth in the Malkizedic realm. In this week's Torah portion, which is Shof Team Judges, the king is commanded to write a copy and to keep a copy of the Torah, to clothe himself with a copy of the Torah all the days of his life. We need to wrap ourselves in the word of Yahuwah. We need to cloak ourselves in the word of Yahuwah. The only way to get victory over these principalities is by the principles of Yahuwah's word being walked out and manifest in our marriages, in our families, in our lives, in our workplace, in our communities. It's time to take a legal position in the heavenlies to this illegal presence that is invading this earth. Time is limited. So because time is limited, these demonic influences are intensifying. They are intensifying, and we need to clothe and wrap ourselves up like kings and priests in his word and walk in that power. Familiar spirits are generational and they are geographical, brethren, you know, there's just sometimes you go somewhere and you go, man, it just feels oppressive here. You see, because familiar spirits, they study the generations. They go in geographical locations. They study our lineage. And that's how they transfer from lineage to lineage to test and to tempt us. They know our forefathers' weaknesses. They know what your daddy did. And they know what his daddy did. And they want to stalk down the generations to the third and fourth generation to see if there's a chink in the armor, an inroad. That's called generational iniquity. It's a real 
tangible thing. We must repent. We must repent of our sins. We must live clean. Clean vessels. Not viral vessels contaminated by the witches and warlocks of this world. And you see one of them broadcast across NBC, the peacock, Malik Peacock, every single day, don't you? Pharmakia. There are many shapeshifters amongst us loaded with familiar spirits entering into a DNA dialogue until they find a match and then there's viral overload. That's the world in which we live. His word is our answer. His word is our answer. Why? Because it's put there to guard you. Do you realize that Yahuwah's word actually changes your DNA? It actually changes your DNA. Remember Jacob and Jacob Yaakov's ladder? That's a DNA helix. The laying, of, laying on of hands, the anointing of oil, baptisms, mikvah, the reading of the word and washing of the word daily. It affects and shape shifts your DNA. There's another shape shifting going on in this world. There's another DNA sequence that they're trying to get into people. But that's from their father, the devil. But do you see what's happening? His word is what guards us. Not the words that nobody's reading on the back of the vial that they're not giving to you. Could I see the ingredient list, please? What? What do you mean? No one's doing that, are they? We have to pray his word. We have to sing his word. We have to rejoice in his word because his word changes our DNA. It's written In Ecclesiastes, you shall not move the boundary stone of your neighbor, is written in the Torah, I should say. And later it is written, he who breaks through the hedge shall be bitten by the serpent. So think about that. Take those two scriptures from two different parts of the word. You shall not move the boundary stone of your neighbor. And then he who breaks through the hedge, the boundary stone, shall be bitten by the serpent. Yahuwah's word is the boundary stone. You may not like it, but you try and move it, and you try and say, oh, well, we don't do that today, oh, oh, that's old, that's our, and you will be bitten. And that's the problem with many of our friends that are in traditional Christianity is the boundary stone has been moved, and now they are succumbing to all of this worldly philosophy and theology, and they are being bitten, le- and many have been bitten, and many have taken the vax, many have taken many of these concoctions, these pharmacia, because they have come into a worldly system. In Ecclesiastes 10, verse 8, it is written, He that digs a pit shall fall into it, and whoever breaks a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. An injection fangs. Whoever removes stone shall be hurt with them, and he that splits wood shall be endangered by it. If the iron is blunt, and one does not sharpen the edge, then he needs more strength. You see, we need to sharpen the edge. Our swords need to be sharp. Our knives need to be sharp. Our word needs to be sharp. Because if we're not sharp in this season, then what's going to happen? You're going to need more muscle. You're going to need more of your carnal strength. And that will lead to somewhere else. You'll depend upon your own strength. So we need to sharpen the sword, the sword which is the word of Yahweh that is able to pierce flesh and bone and marrow and cut it asunder. It's able to to divide and get right to the DNA, the marrow, the DNA deep within it. Wisdom is the profitable thing. But surely the serpent will bite without being charmed then in vain is the charmer. You see, if our understanding of Yahweh's commandments is only in its infancy, then you'll need a lot more of your own strength. 
and your own strength will not see you through the next season. If you have one foot in the world and one foot in the word, then you're not truly walking the way Yahuwah wants you to walk. And you'll fall into the pit of deception that has been dug. It has been dug by the kings of this earth. And it is getting dangerous out there. It really is. If you cross the bloodline, the boundary, you will be bit. There are consequences and ramifications for consent. Do not consent and do not give away the most powerful thing you have, which is your signature or autograph. We overcome Satan by the word and the power of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. These keep us within Yahuwah's boundary. Neglecting either one leave us in a legal position to be bit. Why? Because we broke through the hedge. We moved a boundary stone. We have to be wise and watchful in this next season to thrive. Because a principle ignored creates a generational loss. I don't want to ignore principles because I want my children to be blessed. And there's a lot of voices out there. The danger of a prophetic voice that does not walk with Yahushua is that they will speak to the idols of your heart. So test the spirits. Test the spirits. And demons are masters of the law. Why did S.A. Tan quote to Yahushua in Matthew 4, the law? And where do you think we need to be? Well, we need to be in the Torah, in his word, in the Malkit Zedek vein of it, Yahushua's Torah. Because demons will always be seeking to change times and laws. And right now the laws are changing, flip-flop, flip-flop. This is a mandate today, then it's gone tomorrow. Then it is today, then it's gone. Flip-flop, flip-flop. Daniel prophesied that they would change times and laws. And we are in that time, my friends. We need to put on the rituals of honor, which is the king's commandments, and live as kings and priests on this earth. And today's the Sabbath, and I'm back, and we're back, and you're in the chat. So give us some thumbs up. And remember, subscribe to the ministry. We're going to have a chat and give you an update of what's going on. But today is the Sabbath, and Sabbath is like a wedding ring. And Torah is really the wings of life that allow us to soar to new spiritual heights. And it's such an amazing blessing. We have to practice daily habits of Yahuwah because Torah, it will take you further than desire. Desire fails and this world's desires are failing them. When I started keeping Torah, my worldly desires diminished daily. And I'm so thankful for that. Do you want to live in a world of preference, which is desire, or a world of principles, which is Torah. It's really easy for me to make that decision. Live in the principles. Don't live in the preference. This world's all about, what would you prefer? How would you be prefer to be called? What is your preferred pronoun? What, what is your, live in the principles, not in the preferences. The preferences are worldly desires that lead to death. King Solomon said, wisdom is the principal thing. That's where I'm staying, and that's where I'm standing. Stand with me. Stand on the commandments of Yahuwah together with Torah to the tribes in this next season. And your friends, you know, they may look at you and wonder and say, well, what are you doing? We can rest on any day of the week. Come out and play with me. Let's rise up and play together. Well, they're somewhat right. But that's their worldly preference, isn't it? That's their worldly preference. But the principal thing is the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. So no, I won't go up, rise up and play with you because I'm going to stay 
in the principal thing, not what your preference is. So I'm happy to be back here on the principal day of the Sabbath. And I have Miss Tamara Salerno with us, and she's going to give you guys some updates on what has been going on on all of the Torah to, Torah to the Tribes connection platforms. And um, then we will uh, have a little chat with you afterwards in the chat. But I'm going to invite Miss Tamara Salerno, who hosts and coordinates, many of you know, from Shabbat Fellowship and, of course, the Torah to the Tribes platforms on the Connect. So welcome and give us updates and uh, tell the brethren out there what we've been up to and what's been going on on the line. All right. All well, right. Hello, everybody. I'm blessed to be here. And everybody has been saying, how's Matthew? But yes, he is okay. And he's, I'm more uh, than okay. Yeah, he's, he's on fire for Yahuwah and in alignment. I mean, I think that's one of the things we talked on Shabbat Fellowship about how important it is to be in alignment with Yahuwah. And when we're, we're God conscious, Yahuwah conscious, then we're more aware of those spiritual things. And that's what we're seeing happening right now before yeah. our eyes. So Be that's awesome. Being in alignment, meaning stand on your square. Do not be moved. Do not be shaken, but stand. And if you can still stand, stand. <laughs> we cannot control what other people do, but we can control our responses. And we can still live our life regardless what anybody does to us. It matters not. So that's the principal thing. People have their preferences, but we have to have the principle. Yes, yes, and it's beautiful. And we are so excited about our platforms. I mean, I remember your vision that Yah gave you about how you want to be an online ministry and to create a community. And that is exactly what Yahoo has lined up in our platforms. Um, you know, the, the message of the Melchizedek Priesthood is amazing. I know it's freed up a lot of people. Yaz used that. We're having 150,000 views on the Melchizedek message right now. So it is just really freeing to understand that. And he's using that in, um, in many people's lives. And Miss Tamara was telling me yesterday as we were sitting out on my front porch, she was talking to me about some of these um, things that are happening, and, and oftentimes, most of the time, I really don't know because I, I, I study, I'm with my family, I come here and I make the, the presentation of the word to you guys, but I don't follow necessarily what's happening on many of the platforms or how what the viewership is, that type of thing. So I was somewhat surprised, and quite honestly, sometimes, you know, I leave and I can't, I can't imagine the impact that we are really happen, having. Yes. So it was really encouraging to me because, I mean, I look out and we, we have a small group here. We've got the cameras we're broadcasting. And then we have um, in, in the past, before all of this lockdown, we'd have the seasonal feasts and whatnot and see several hundred people. But the impact is so much broader and greater than that that you don't see with yes. the eyes. It's yes. uh, Tell us about that. It is beautiful. That. Yeah. So because we're reaching Denmark, Germany, uh, Puerto Rico, many people are coming from different countries and connecting with us whether it's through emails or on our platform. So we are so blessed to meet you and, and thank you for connecting with us. I'd like to kind of start off with the brothers gathering, if you don't mind. Um, we have been taking a break from our platforms this summer and we are looking forward to rejoining with everybody in September. It'll be the first week in September that all of our flat platforms will be rejoining. But the, starting with the men's gathering, we have four dynamic men that have a heart for Yahuwah, and they really want to empower other men in dealing with men, men's issues, um, connecting with what does it mean to be a Melchizedek priest, how to do that in their household, be good fathers, be good husbands, um, or just even in the community. So we're excited about some of the changes that are going on in the men's gathering. They'll be meeting um, on Monday nights again. Uh, they'll have the first and the third will be teaching nights, but they also are going to do on the second and fourth Monday a uh, fellowship because they really feel like they need to connect more and um, on a more personal level. So very excited about um, what's going on with the men's fellowship. That's fabulous. And the impact that we've had, and I won't use any names, but um, 
is, is, is just huge. I was um, contacted by a brother that was in South America and was stuck in South America and had contacted, I believe, reached out to you and then you forwarded mm -hmm. the email to me and we were able to make some connections with a private flight and to get this man and his family out of the country back into the States and just amazing to have that fellowship and connection and I believe he's now connected with some brothers down in Florida and that's what this ministry is all about we want to be the helping hands to help you out there in your time of need I mean I somebody reached out to me just this week and was desperate in the middle of um, here in the States no money no gas by the side of the road and you know what we want to be the hands and feet to our people the tribes, you guys out there, when you need help, to connect you with others. And that's what this ministry is about. And to be able to see that, to see that we could be a part of helping a family get out of South America safely, that to me is what it's all about, you know, because it's all, it, it all comes around. Yes. If you, you be the hands and feet and you be a blessing, you'll get blessed back and you just see multiplicity of harvest growth. Yes, it truly is a blessing of Yahuwah. And, you know, we started off calling these platforms, but really we are a community now. We are tighter than ever before, and that's what really excites me. We cannot wait to get on our, on our meetings to um, see how everyone's doing and to connect. So the next one I'd like to go for the sisters, the sisters gathering sisters. You know this is my heart. I love the connections we are having. Um, this coming uh, uh, September, though, we're going to meet every day of the week, I mean, every Tuesday. Um, on the first and the third, we'll do teaching meetings, but on the second and the fourth, we're gonna go ahead and do some fellowship time. We're also finding the sisters really need to connect with each other um, and, and talk about sisters' things. And a lot of single uh, ladies that I have questions about finding a husband or what not to do, what to do, how to just live life in general as um, a woman in this, in this world. So we are very encouraged by that, um, t that connection. And then, of course, we've been doing our Covenant Calendar Club, which is on Friday and Saturday mornings, but we're going to do a big shift in that. And with that, we're going to change it to a Melchizedek study group. And we do feel like the calendar is vitally important. We want to be on Yah's times and seasons, we, but we want to open it up to a brighter, a broader prospect of information for you. So we will be discussing... Torah portions, law versus covenant issues, calendar, biblical prophecies, discipleship, ancient Hebrew concepts. We're going to have more of a Bible study. So come, please, with your questions. And, of course, you can go and sign up on our website on the Connect page. And right now it's, it says covenant calendar, but we'll change that. But we, we want to get your, the information through the email system that we have. So please sign up for, to be on that email list. And it will, um, instead of doing it on Friday and Saturday mornings, we're just going to do it on Fridays. And so we hope that you will please join us. Come with your questions. Let's study together and find out more about what Yahweh has for us. But those of you that are really still interested in the calendar, great. We want that. I mean, yes. make those sundials. Do those studies. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of study and resource material on the calendar too so it's not that yes. we're laying that down but we don't want to limit ourselves we want our groups to grow and sometimes it's good to pivot and shift and be able to bring forth more study information yes and thank you for um for that because uh, we do have a youtube channel called yahoo servant that has all of those calendar teachings that um jose and brandon have done that really do direct you to more information on that so you can freely um, look at those um, if you're interested in that. And then we have our prayer gathering. Our prayer gathering meets on Sunday nights. Um, it is monitored with Deborah Bond. She's doing a fabulous job. But we also do prayer requests. So you could either be on the prayer team or you can email your prayer request to prayergathering at tourtothetribes.com. And there, our prayer team will pray for you and your family and the needs of the community. They're doing a powerful job on that. And then we have our Torah Youth, which meets on Wednesday nights from the first and third of um, every month. 
And uh, really, we're developing Yahweh's character in our youth. And it is so exciting to see their growth that we've had with them. So I want to encourage any mothers or fathers that have children between the ages of 11 and 17, sign up for our emails so you can receive the information to connect and grow. With the, ki- the children have, we do a, a message, and then we have some games, and we get to know each other. And it's good to know like-minded believers, especially in our youth at this time and um, in what's going on in this world. And then I wanted to take us to our feasts. Okay. Because um, we do observe Rosh Kadesh. We observe it uh, the first day of the month um, as a community. An uh, email goes out about that. And we celebrate it because not because it's a commandment, but because we get to. Yahuwah says to count our days. And it keeps us all on track on the same count. So we meet for about an hour on Rosh Kadesh, just encouraging each other, worshiping, and acknowledging that day. We don't bark at the moon, or we're not. We don't we're not, bark no, at the no, moon. No, nothing like that. I mean, we don't <laughs> want to lead you astray. No, and um, and we are, again are looking at the feast coming up in September, uh, starting with Yom Teruah. We're going to have a worship night for Yom Teruah. But Teruro. we do rip on the show far. We do rip. We do on rip on the show. <laughs> well, that's part of worship, isn't it? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we'll be um, sending out information on that. Uh, we'll do a Zoom platform for that. And um, so Sukkot's coming up. I've had a lot of questions. Flee to the wilderness. Flee to the wilderness. The woman in the wilderness is raw. And uh, again, this year, you know, Oregon actually has a lot of lockdown limitations still. We're experiencing that. Today. So, we, so Maybe not tomorrow. We just are. I don't know about yesterday. <laughs> are encouraging everyone to celebrate and look for their local communities. Get together, brother to brother. And that's why, come on Shabbat Fellowship. Find other people that are in your area. Um, establish a, a Sukkot in your own community. Um, there are a few that will be connecting in, in small groups around the U.S. at least. So if you um, connect on the email, on Shabbat Fellowship email, you will receive updates on that that's coming forth as we um, get that information okay, okay good i guess larry's saying hold the microphone a little closer to your mouth Thank there you. you go there you go i hope you can hear me there you go i can hear you but i've got the earpieces <laughs> and then i did want to come um from shabbat fellowship i mean our shabbat fellowship on saturday mornings are that's so special anointed time. special it, time it really it is. really is yeah it really is and i think that um it is such a blessing to be able to connect with our community and when love am I each next other. coming on Shabbat Fellowship? I've been bad. I've, you I've, have been bad. I've forgotten a couple of times. I have unscheduled you, so Ooh. now. <laughs> oh, because I know show yeah. once or twice, three times, three times. See, this so, is what happens. <laughs> Stay up too late. I'm like it's Shabbat, and then I yeah. But we'll get you back. We'll on. get me back. We'll, we'll get, get me back on. on. We'll get a, sure. We'll get a calendar ping. So um, I did also want to talk about our our Shabbat Fellowship Facebook page. We have 1,600 members on our page, and hello to all of you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we have uh, really been blessed to connect with people all over the world on that Shabbat Fellowship, encouraging each other, and we wanted to talk a little bit about Torah portions because people are asking, what are Torah portions? So if somebody asked you, what is a Torah portion? What would you, how would you describe well, it? Well, the Torah portions, basically, traditionally, there's been two ways of doing it. There was the annual cycle, which after Sukkot, you would begin reading the Torah, the whole of the five books of Moshe, over the duration of the next year leading up to the next Sukkot, where each week, roughly, you know, four to six chapters, depending on the segment, portion, or parasha in the Hebrew, is broken up. Now, it has a corresponding reading in the writings and the prophets. That's called the Haftara. And then there's a corresponding reading in the Brit Hadashah. And it's like this vein that is threaded all through the scripture. Now, there is also the triennial cycle where you can read the Torah cycle on a three-year rotation. Personally, I like the annual cycle, and that's what we do here with the Haftara and then the Brit Hadashah reading with it. Yes. Um, I've done, what, nine, nine seasons? Actually, I've done most probably 11 or 12, but um, 
those first three seasons, I think they're missing in um, on a cassette tape somewhere, or maybe a CD. Yeah. But um, when was the last time I taught the tour cycle? Well, actually, it was in two, the end of 2015. So put it in the comments section or in the chat. What do you think about Tour to the Tribes after Sukkot this year that I teach the Torah cycle again for one year, taking us from Bereshit all the way through, Genesis all the way through the cycle? I think it'll be fabulous. I know that it's been a while for me. And and some of you have never even actually um, been with me through a current cycle. So Yeah. And and so I did want to just make a, make a mo- mention of those tour portions are posted on Facebook. So you'll see the announcement with all the, the details of those scriptures. But also in our Shabbat Fellowship emails. At the bottom of the email, you're going to see me post Matthew's teachings from 2014 and 15 and the listed scriptures. So some of you have questioned where do where are they getting that information? It's Scroll all down ready. on the email. Yes. Scroll down on the email and get a Torah calendar, Torah portion calendar printed or on your computer and yeah it, just a list of each week you yes, get a new yeah. n- the, the so verses. drop it down in the comments do you want me to teach the torah cycle this year or would you like a different book or a topical teaching put your comments down in the comment section or right now in the chat what do you say let me know would love to hear your feedback yeah. And then just a little surprise for you, Matthew. Oh, dear. I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't like surprises. On behalf of Shabbat Fellowship, I come today to let you know how instrumental Yahweh has used you in all of our lives. And we so appreciate you being so faithful, so authentic, so transport transparent in what you have said and shared and taught. It makes us feel like... It, it, we're real. We're real people, a real community, and we're working and living this life out together. And I have a couple of emails I would just like to read oh, to yeah, you, yeah. if you don't mind, no. um, from a couple of people that are in Shabbat Fellowship, because I feel like you need to hear the heart of your of the people that are listening. Uh, this brother says, Shalom, brother. You know I still love you like a dad and you and look up to you and this move is what we need. I know we all got carnal during this revelation study and through this year it has still latched on. But seeing you are wanting to return to the spirit man makes me happy. I don't know what it's like to live where you're at, but I know Abba wouldn't make you go there if you couldn't handle it. You're a strong man and inspire me to walk more upright in Yahuwah for my marriage and my family. So just always know you have us for whatever you need, brother. I'm just a phone call away or an email. Oh, blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's encouraging. That yes. really is. Yeah. And one more, just Brother Matthew, my family and I hope and pray that you and your family be blessed and protected. The tour to the tribe's ministry and your teachings have been instrumental in our spiritual development and our walk with Yahuwah. I believe with all my heart and soul that Yah led to me to your teachings when he brought me into the truth last year, and I was overwhelmed and searching for a way forward. Your teachings have taught me so much and helped me and my family learn and grow together in Torah. Hearing about your family in particular has been a joy to experience. Everything about your teachings is uplifting, encouraging, and edifying. And even during your Revelation series, which was the first series I listened to, was uplifting simply because you're speaking the truth. And Yahweh's truth is uplifting. Your close relationship with the Father is evident in all you say and teach. And coupled with your authenticity and honesty, you deliver biblical topics and history in a way that is easy to digest and comprehend. I know you're dedicated to the body because you recently helped me and my family. And uh, please be encouraged because you have and continue to encourage so many. The Ruach told me a few days ago when my natural man was getting excited about potential work challenges to relax and have shalom because Yahuwah is in control. Everyone I know closely in the T4 community is praying for you and supporting you. And while we yearn for your words every Shabbat evening, we want you to have shalom first and foremost. We pray it is upon you and your family all the days. Amen. And I feel those prayers. Mm -hmm. I have 
felt those prayers this past month, and my life is truly, truly just uh, magnificently impacted because of those prayers. So thank you all, my wife, my children, and I. We feel it, and it's, it truly means a lot. And that's why we're so excited about these prayer groups, mm-hmm. about these ministry online platforms, communities better that are forming and coming together. If so, if you're not connecting, please go to Torah to the Tribes dot com forward slash connect start out with the shabbat fellowship that's most probably going to be a great inroad for you to start to meet and connect with people and find some in your area in your state in your county maybe even in your village yes yes and yahweh is really blessing us all to be a part of this um this journey you know and i just i'm looking forward to reconnecting with everybody again in september watch your emails and we'll see you then all right baruch hashem mm-hmm. yahweh thank you so much thank Tamara. You. and uh let's see what you guys have to say in the chat and i'll open up the chat here for a minute and then we will get ready for the book of acts next week after a little break that we took here this past month okay all right let's see if i can refresh the screen here we had a few technical uh, a few technicals getting ready here today so uh Thank you guys for holding on and being faithful. If you do have something to say, then please redline me at Torah to the Tribes. I see up there in Snohomish County, Diesel Grandma says, topical teaching, oh, topical teaching on breaking generational strongholds and familiar spirits. Wow, isn't that powerful? When we see you next personally, Diesel Grandma, me and my wife will tell you a story about some generational stalking spirits, won't we, Tamara? Now she's looking at me like, what story? We will, we will. But it's powerful. It's powerful. Down to dates, times. They stalk the DNA. Generational iniquity. Okay, so there's another one. Giant killer up there in Snohomish County. How Shabbat is a wedding ring. Moreover, I also gave them my Shabbat to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am Yahuwah who sanctifies them. Of course, that is coming to us from Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20. And if you want to get a mind bomb, Go and study the Ezekiel series and you'll realize that there were 13 scrolls, not a bunch of Masoretic chapters. Angela Bonjour. I thought Matthew took his family off the grid. Our family is able to be off the grid, which is pretty cool, I must say. But no, we were sipping lemonade um, on the front porch with um, star jasmine everywhere, right? Right? Yes. Got a lot of star jasmine growing up my front porch right now. So, yeah, I've been out doing the garden. All right. What else do we have? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, you guys. Yes, on the Torah, Porsche, says Vinta P. Vinta P. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Libby Tube. Torah portions by Torah to the tribes. Libby down there in Louisiana says, that's a go. That's a go. I think that would be refreshing, actually. Hmm. And Emissary of Elohim says, if anyone wants to pick up on the Torah portions, it will be week 44, beginning of Deuteronomy. So there's, depending on what calendar you're on, right, depends upon what cycle. So we would most probably Torah to the tribes, Miss Tamra, correct me if I'm wrong, we're just following the traditional um, cycle of print, right, which is the Hillel 2 when it comes to the Torah cycle. Start a new after Sukkot. So don't hate us, Hillel 2. All right. Much more beauty down there in Florida, surfing it up most probably. Yes, to Torah portion cycles. Much more beauty, Jerry, John Norton Jr. too. Chris as well. Oh, yeah, so Tim, Chris. Oh, lots, Teresa. All right. 
All right, this is looking good. Cameron, how are you doing down there in California? It is good to be back. Thank you. We had an amazing experience. I got the honor of um, mikfaring Cameron in the Willamette River last year, and that truly was beautiful, wasn't it? Wasn't it, honey? Beautiful, beautiful. Rebecca Spalding down there in Utah. And how is your garden growing? I bet your garden is thriving down there in Utah, Rebecca. Let's see. She wants to do the Torah portions too. Love it. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah. All right. Bear with me here. Bear with me. I'm going through. I'm scrolling. You've been busy bees. Busy bees. Now, Shazy Kellner says, I had a nasty run-in with familiar spirits a while back. Almost costed me everything. By Yah's love and guidance from an amazing woman, I prevailed. Hallelujah. Thank you. And blessings. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. What, you just jumped on me. Where did you go? There you go. Okay. Shabbat Shalom, Linda George. She's got some CDs on the Torah portions from 2014. Modesto, thank you, brother. Great to see you back in the chat. Modesto's been a faithful listener for many, many years. And there is Jose down there in Florida. Thank you, brother, for being a watchman on the wall and working hard with much more truth down there in the panhandle, the manhandle, panhandle. I think the nasal test could be tied to the covenants being made with Satan, says much more truth, where it gives Satan the ability to pursue us. Thoughts? Well, again, invisible contracts, brother, invisible contracts. It all takes you back to the trading floors of Ezekiel 28. Satan, trading in souls. It's all commercial. Everything is commercial. And the only remedy is to come out of her, my people. Because if there is no contract, no commercial agreement, then what do you have? But the contracts are invisible because people, we've grown up in this society. So, yeah, I think you're barking up the right tree there. Wheel adapter spacers. Okay, wheel adapter spacers. A directory of Suco gatherings and contact info would be great. Miss Tamara Salerno will be working on that, most probably on the Shabbat Fellowship, I would imagine. And um, I don't know what we're doing here in Oregon. We're going to have some chats with some of our brethren here with some suggestions. I'm not opposed to anything. I mean, if there's a, if there's a gathering, I don't know. I, I can't say too much online because then I, people will hold me to it. But I'm open, right? Tamara's nodding, shaking your head, right? Okay. Shut up, Matthew. That's what she's... She wouldn't say that, of course, but, you know, I'm reading in between the husband-wife lines of 25 years of bliss. All right. Gabriella, 243 days free of the demon liquor. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahweh, stay strong, stay away. Who said that? What, what movie was that on? Oh, that was Anna, Green Gables. That was Anna G Green Gables, and who was it? Rachel Lynn. Rachel Lynn and a demon liquor. Yeah, that's right. Right, oh, that's great. If you haven't watched Anna of Green Gables, you've got to watch Anna of Green Gables, right? The original, the original, great series. Um, we love it, don't we? Yeah, it's a great series. That's why we wanted to go up to Prince Edward Island, wasn't it? That's why we went on holiday. Because of Anne of Green Gables. Oh, we haven't? I thought we did. All right. Okay. All right. I'm dreaming in my dreams. All oh, right. Sorry. Sorry. I thought we'd been there, haven't we? I thought we've been a lot of places. Oh. All right. 
All right, guys and girls, guys and girls. Ah, here we go. Karen Long. She says, blessings. We used to live down the road from you in Puerto Viejo, Ecuador. And we have friends in our church there from Medellin. Medellin. Ah, oh, there are people from all over the world. Do we have anybody from the Dominion Republic, I wonder? I wonder. I wonder. Lots going on. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah. I will let you guys go. I have no idea how long we've been going here today because it was a little bit different, wasn't it, coming back in. But I wanted to give you guys an update and to inspire you and encourage you truly to Shema, to Shema, to Shema. God, God, God. Be in the Word in season out. Press into the Spirit of Yahuwah. Be very watchful of the invisible contracts because we are about the people of the covenants. We make covenant with Yahuwah. It's very clear. It's very apparent. And it's by the blood of the Lamb, Yahusha. And we know what we're getting with Yahuwah. It is salvation because we repent of our sins and we move into a holy lifestyle. Attached faith, attached to the commandments, brings forth blessings. I pray Yahuwah bless you. Please support this ministry. Consider supporting this ministry in your tithes and your offerings. And please give us some thumbs up because it helps populate this video teaching. And it can save a life. It can bring in one of those lost sheep of the house of Israel scattered abroad. We've seen it so many times and it changes lives. So please help support the ministry by giving a thumbs up and put some positive comments down below and make connections with brethren from every tribe, every creed, every color because Yahweh is gathering his people in from all over the world and it is an amazing event to see. We look forward to seeing you next Shabbat. Be blessed. Be strong and pray for one another. And thank you so much for all your prayers for me and my house. Shabbat Shalom.